Welcome home, your majesty. We have been eagerly anticipating your arrival. The palace staff has been preparing for your return for weeks. Everything has been arranged to perfection. The ruler of the Fae, after all, deserves nothing less. The people have been patiently waiting for you since your departure and they are looking forward to your kingdom tour tomorrow. But you've only just got in, and you must adjust to the slower pace of this world compared to the mortal's realm. I imagine you'll at least be wanting some refreshments. Our land's finest chefs have been brought in from all over the five provinces to appease any hunger you may feel. After so long in the mortal realm, I would think you would want to sample bits of our best cuisine. It's certainly been a while. We've missed you, your highness. Please, follow me to the great hall. As you can see, the palace has been kept in perfect order since you've left. The white marble was washed free of stains, all the precious metals have been polished to a magnificent sheen, and the gemstones in the ceiling glitter against the candlelight from our crystal chandeliers. Even the carpets have been washed and fluffed to ensure that soft walk for you to the great hall. Oh, can you smell it, your majesty, as we're getting closer? Oh, take a deep breath of it actually take a few deep breaths of it. Being mortal air for so long must have taken its toll on your lungs. <sighs> mm, the food smells absolutely tantalizing. We're nearly there. Oh, your majesty, the artists of the kitchen have outdone themselves. The scent alone is a dream within this dream of a world, and the sights. Oh, I will go through each of the options prepared, and then you can choose the one that seems best to your refined palate. Each province's finest chef has been prepared the specialty of their homeland. Let us begin at the left. Here, from the Valley of Roses, the first province, is an elemental of nature, and with her she's prepared a blossom salad. This famed dish is formed from the petals of the softest flowers in the valley, tossed with countless edible stems. All of this is seasoned with a thick, sweet dressing milked from lilacs and roses. And this is also included in the dressing as along with the nectar from the flowers. Um, there's honey, as the uh, bees of the field have prepared it, and it is harvested once a year. Combined with the nectar, it makes an incomparable dressing to this delicious salad. Its dessert-like taste is complemented by its intense floral fragrance, a treat for the nose and the tongue alike. Take a whiff of it. Ah, so sweet. Despite the thick sauce, though, blossom salads are very light on the stomach, filling only to the point of comfort. They won't make you bloated or any like anything like that that you might have seen in the mortal realm. But let's move on to our second dish. Our second chef today is from the dwarven mines of the southern mountains. He has prepared for your eating pleasure a dwarven smoked steak with mushroom sauce served on a bed of local roots and tubers, all cooked to perfection. The plants on the that form the bed of the dish are picked ripe and juicy in the depths of the mines where they grow in abundance. The mushrooms, too, for the thick dipping sauce, which can be poured over the dish, also grow wild in the mines. The dwarves in most of their cuisine, you understand, use what is around them, and since they are underground, 
Most of their dishes include some kind of fungi or roots, tubers, that sort of thing. Now the steak is made from the finest meat. The beasts found in the valleys between the southern mountains. It is for this meat that the dwarves leave the mines once a year to hunt. The steak, once prepared and marinated in a special blend of herbs and spices, which are also retrieved from the valleys, is grilled and smoked by dragon's fire in the belly of the mountain. It smells of a warm campfire, and it is a taste sensation, both spicy and savory. And an additional note to this one, the dwarves consider these hunting trips a rite of passage among their people. So it's almost like a coming of age dish and it, this particular dish is traditionally served after they've returned from the hunt. But take a smell of it before we move on. Oh, there's nothing like that smoked scent. Mm, feels so good somehow, reminds you of coziness and campfires. Mm, delicious. Third on the menu is a salty marine soup from the underwater Mer Kingdom, the third province. This dish is comparable to what I believe is considered Far Eastern cooking on the mortal plane. The merfolk have carefully selected the most flavorful of plants found below the waves. Once they have been chopped and prepared appropriately, the cooks swim from their ocean home into the northernmost oceans, where they tap the ice there to fetch the freshest glacial water in which to cook the soup. You can imagine they have to travel incredibly far, as the merfolk prefer the warmer waters, and so they dwell quite far south, kind of on the southwestern borders. And so this is a very special dish for your return, Majesty. It is rare that they prepare so fine cuisine, as it takes its toll on the cooks. The plants are combined with the choicest freshwater and saltwater fish alike to transform the glacial water into a tantalizing broth. If you actually hear, have a taste of the broth, can get all the different flavors from the, the salt water and the fresh water and the very very light and very I guess you could just call it a marine broth it very much has a clear taste when combined with the carefully made delicate noodles that they prepare on land the soup is both deceptively light and filling simultaneously and it smells, understandably, of the sea. Take a smell. Mm, like being on a beach. Oh, thank you very much, chef. Let us move on to the fourth province. Our fourth chef from the elven forest in the north has brought with her lo loaves of fine elven bread. Oh, Majesty, the smell is beyond description. There is truly nothing like fresh baked bread to titillate the nose. <laughs> the bread center is white, fluffy, and soft, while the crust is a crunchy golden brown. It's warm. It's been specially prepared this morning for you, and she even toasted a few slices. There are simply no bakers comparable to the elves in the north in mortal and fey realms alike, and these loaves, as I said, are freshly prepared. This chef has also brought with her butter made from the milk of the elven cattle herds, which are also famed throughout the land. The butter melts instantly, seeping into the thick, warm bread slices. She even has a selection of jams made from the wild berries found, found and cultivated in the gardens within the elven forest and around its edges. Mmm, take a smell. <laughs> Your majesty, my goodness, take a couple of whiffs of this. Mmm, fresh bread. 
I wish I could make it myself. Thank you very much for your presentation. And at long last, our own palace chef has prepared juices and wines from natural products gathered from within our city walls and from all of the five provinces. In addition to these finely aged wines and fresh juices, the palace chef has prepared cheeses both sharp and mild from the milk of the goat herds of the southern mountains as well as the elven cattle herds. These have been aged appropriately along with the wines in our root cellars beneath the palace. As you can see, we've been preparing a long time for your return. So, your majesty, what would you like? You can feel free to take as many choices as you like, and as much as you want from those choices from any number of tables. It is all here for your pleasure alone. Excellent choice, your majesty. Let us pause a moment to partake of the bounty that the five provinces have prepared for you. I hope your hunger has been satiated, your majesty. The servants have assembled and are prepared to carry you by litter to your private chambers for some time to relax. After all, as I said, you've only just arrived and goodness knows the spirit does not live on food alone. One must have time to rest and recuperate. You have a big day touring the, touring the entire kingdom by dragon. But once you've reached your private chambers, you will receive a massage to ease away the tension and prepare you for tomorrow. Oh, you look tired, Highness. Perhaps you should lay down as you're carried. You needn't worry about the servants. They are strong of body and will easily be able to carry one light as you. Please, lie down. The litter is cushioned covered in the softest silks and velvets from across the lands. So find a comfortable position, and you will be whisked away to a place of utter relaxation. When we get there, I'll begin the massage personally. Until then, though, perhaps your majesty would select incense to burn? The mortal realm has undoubtedly dulled your senses, and I firmly believe it would do you a world of good to clear your mind and body with some of the scents of the fairy world. These are unlike the mortal variety. They do not cloud you in smoke, nor do they aggravate your body in any way. With allergies and whatnot, this incense is for scent alone. We have five varieties, one from each province. No, you needn't get up. As the litter is carried, I will walk alongside you and present each one individually. You can make your choice once we reach the private chambers. This first one is from the Valley of Roses, and it is, predictably, a floral scent. It has undertones of mm, soothing lavender, but it smells primarily of roses. Take a smell. Mm. I know your majesty's partiality to roses, and that's why we've prepared this one especially for you, despite the wide variety of different scents coming from the Valley of Roses. The second incense is from the Dwarven province, and it smells of both evergreen and fire so it has both the scent of nature and the scent of creation aside from nature. When the dwarves hunt in the southern valleys, like we said they did for the meat for the steak today, they will often burn pine boughs to produce smoke to keep away the insects. And since everyone has to go through this ritual as a coming of age, They've grown to love the scent so much, and they now produce it in both perfume and incense. Take a smell. Mm. Ah, it's that campfire smell again, but with that hint of evergreen that keeps it, I don't know, light, I guess. 
Our third choice is from the Ocean Kingdom, and it smells of fresh rain. There is no scent more natural than this, my lady. It is light and reminiscent of the beginning of spring after a long frozen winter. In the Mer world, of course, winter is a time when they're unable to communicate with the rest of the people as they must remain in their town for the water grows cold. Thus, they love spring as much as the rest of us, and they've encapsulated the scent specifically to remember that most blessed of times. Smell. Hmm. It really does smell like spring. Our fourth scent, we have the wooden scent of the Elven Kingdom. It smells of their native forest, and I suppose it's comparable to the mortal scent of sandalwood. Our variety, however, is far deeper and richer than that of the humans. It smells, well, <laughs> like a forest. All the leaves and the bark and trees and... You just feel like you can almost feel the dappled light passing through the canopy. Take a smell. <sighs> That's enough to transport you north. Finally, we have the capital's own signature scent. This is the richest, most opulent smell of all. Best described as a combination of vanilla chocolate and coffee, all in one mouth-watering blend. Take a smell. Oh, you almost want to taste it. It smells so delicious. But we've arrived, and so which would you prefer, your highness? We have the first one, the floral scent, from the Valley of Roses. We have the smoky evergreen scent from the Dwarven Mines. We have the scent of fresh rain from the Underwater Kingdom. We have the sandalwood forest scent from the Elven Land. And finally, the capital's own signature opulent scent. The one that's tasty. <laughs> Which would you prefer? Ah, uh, yes, I am partial to that one myself. Now that we've arrived, please stay in that comfortable position. I'll ask you to roll on your back if you need to. And you can feel free to stretch, but otherwise just sink into the pillows on your litter. The blinds have been closed, and the room is lit only by candles. We are alone here. You are safe in your own private chambers. You have no need to worry about privacy or about any kind of self-conscious thought. It's just you and I. You're safe. Now, please relax as I light your chosen incense. Ah, take a deep breath of it, your majesty. You do have impeccable taste. Now, Allow me to begin the massage. As I said, make yourself comfortable and just relax. Take a few more deep breaths if you need to. I'm going to begin the massage starting at the very tips of your toes and I'm going to finish in the last strands of your hair. So to begin, I'm just going to take the toes and just sort of wrap them between my fingers, wake you up a bit. <laughs> Sorry if it tickles a little bit. There we go. And I'm just going to kind of wrap your feet around the bottom and knead them in my hands like dough. This is just to get my hands a little bit warmer and to prepare your feet because sometimes at least in my experience. If you don't touch the feet beforehand when you actually start the massage, 
your feet are still ticklish, which completely defeats the purpose of having a relaxing massage. There we go. Now I'm just going to get some oil from right beside the litter, grab my hands, warm them up a bit. There we go. Now I'm going to start at the base of your feet and rub gently to remove the tension in light circles. Again, kneading as if your feet were dough. Kneading, pressing. I'm going to do a little bit of reflexology. Is there anywhere that hurts your highness? All right. I will focus on that point in the foot to apply pressure and wrap in small circles. The foot is a point that will affect other parts of the body and depending on where I massage in the foot, you will feel the effects in a different part of your body. So I'll focus on that part that you were telling me about. There we go. Can you feel the pain going? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Go around the toes. Keep rubbing smoothly in small circles. And now I'm going to move to larger circles and again move into kneading as if my hands were, were working dough. There we go. I'm going to move up the ankle and up into the calf muscle. Here I'll be doing long wrapping motions up and down the calf, spreading the oil in my hands, and again kneading the muscles, keeping them relaxed, up and down, and untying all the knots you're feeling in those muscles. Mm, your legs must feel nice and warm and relaxed. Pressing gently and forcefully, but never hard enough to hurt you. Just enough to relieve the tension. I can feel your legs warming up beneath my hands. It's good. Relax those muscles. There, I'm going to do some lobster claw motions. Again, kneading this time horizontally. And, as always, alternating between light pressure and, and more forceful pressure, always in the goal to relieve tension and relax the fibers of your muscles. There we go. Now I'm going to lightly remove my hands, although not completely, just dancing my fingertips down the calf to relax them. And now I'm going to press down again and move up to the thigh, thigh muscles, and start repeating the process. As always, kneading and pressing, alternating between pressure and light pressure. Pressing down and up repeating the same motions in a relaxing pace. I can feel your muscles de-stressing, can you? I can almost feel the knots as I go in around. Up and down, spreading the oil and the warmth. Keep comfortable, your highness. Keep sinking into the litter as I continue down. Now I'm going to move into the horizontal motions again with that lobster claw, never breaking contact with your, with your skin. Alternating hands back and forth, back and forth. Mm. I hope you're relaxing. I can feel your muscles. Hopefully it's reaching your mind. The incense still smells delicious. Alright, now I'm going to begin those 
lighter strokes down back to a vertical motion, slowly removing my fingers as I put less and less pressure with every stroke. Very nice. Now I'm going to do your arms. So I'm going to start at the forearm, or not the forearm, the bicep, silly me. The bicep and tricep, the larger top part of your arm. And again, I'm going to knead the muscles, searching for any kind of knots. And now on the arms, I'm finding a little bit of tension, so I'm going to press and find these pressure points. And I'm going to press down on these pressure points to relieve the knots in your muscles. So I'll just be applying pressure. There. I can feel the muscle loosening. There we go. Now I'm going to move to the next pressure point. Mm, there. And I found one more over here. Still applying pressure in a single point to relieve any knots. There. There we go. Now I'm going to do about the same motion that I did on the legs. Starting vertically. Just pressing on them. Alternating between light and heavier pressure on the bicep muscles and the tricep muscles. And vertical motions, again, never breaking contact with the skin. There. Mm. It feels nice to have the tension removed, I would think. So long in the mortal realm, and you never had knots like this before, Majesty. <sighs> there. Now I'm going to move to the horizontal kind of lobster claw. Again, alternating pressure as always. Back and forth. And now I'm going to move to the forearm and repeat the process. Starting with vertical. Doing the vertical motions for a little while and then moving into the horizontal lobster claw. almost done your arms and just as before I'm going to do the lighter slowly putting less and less pressure as I move from a full hand contact to just my fingertips stroking up and down there now I'm going to just take your hands and wrap them between my fingers the hands have such fine muscles and fine motor that they're used even more than you'd think, and so they need to relax too. Up your fingers and down, and putting pressure on the palm of your hands. There. There. And now I'm going to move to your lower back, and I'm going to start kneading, searching for the knots in the lower back. I found a few, so I'm just going to start massaging gently, moving to a little bit heavier pressure slowly as I go back and forth along your lower back, pressing the skin upwards, pushing it back down. And now I'm going to do the pressure points again. So here we go, you've only got a few, so I'll start with this one. Just in the right side of your lower back, I'm going to apply pressure to relieve the knot in that muscle. There we go. There. And one more on the other side. There we go. There, now I'm going to do more lobster claw-like motions, back and forth and up and down, kneading the skin between my fingers, gently as always, never hurting you. Now 
I'm going to move my hands and lobster claws up the sides of your torso and back down, warming and slowly up and down, taking the loose skin and folding it between my fingers, gently massaging your obliques. Yeah. It's a very relaxing motion. It ignites the nerves, distracting from any other pain you may feel by touching on the larger nerve groups. And then I'm going to move on to the main part of your back, always avoiding the spine, but moving up the scapula and down, kneading your skin between my fingers and as always, spreading the oil and applying pressure where it's needed. Lobster clawing up and down, side to side. Massaging the tension from your back. The back is such a large muscle, it's used constantly and it is often one of the most abused muscles in the body. And so we'll keep massaging it easing it free of tension, getting rid of any knots that were accumulated during your stay in the mortal world. Mm. Don't forget to keep breathing slowly and resting, sinking ever more deeply into the pillows, letting yourself be completely at ease at peace in the safety and comfort of your private chambers in your palace. And now I'm going to, never breaking contact, move up into the shoulders. And here I'm going to lobster claw up your neck and down to your shoulder, massaging the uppermost part of your dorsal muscles in your trapezoid, kneading it and doing any pressure points to relieve knots, spreading the oil and warming the muscle so that it will be loose for the next day. You can feel my fingers kneading along, alternating between more pressure and less loosening the muscles and relieving the, the tension and the knots, any other problems you may be feeling. Your muscles don't have to tense at all, they can be completely let go, supported by the litter and sinking into the cushions. down, back and forth as I massage your shoulders and neck. And now finally, at long last, I'm going to run my fingers through your hair and give you a scalp massage. This is the most relaxing and yet invigorating part whole experience, just gently running my fingers through your hair, pressing on your scalp, igniting all the nerves in the top of your head, and giving you tingling sensations that run down your body. Mm. It feels good. It feels very good. I'm going to go behind your ears and rub your ears, which can also be an odd pressure point, but it does feel good. I massage the ears and the scalp. roll over so I can see your face and 
just going to rub along your hairline and then back into the scalp. Don't worry about your head, I'm supporting it with my other hand. Your Majesty, close your eyes if you haven't. It's time for you to rest. Time for you to go to sleep and get ready for tomorrow. Don't worry about falling asleep now. I will wake you when it is necessary. Just go to sleep. Rest your eyes. Let your mind accompany your body into total and utter relaxation. Sleep. Rest. I will watch over you and protect you. You are safe.